All right, hello everybody, and today we're going to be proving Cauchy's integral formula right here, which says that some complex function evaluated at some point s can be expressed as this contour integral right here. So in order to prove this result right here, we need a couple of conditions of our function which need to be met. First of all, we have our gamma right here, and we want f to be polymorphic on our gamma, which means it can be complex differentiable everywhere inside of this domain right here. Second of all, we want our s, our point s in here, to be inside of gamma. So what exactly does this look like right here? Let's say this is the complex plane, so I have my real axis and my imaginary axis, and I have some curvy path thing like so. And we want our path to be traversed in the positive direction by convention, assuming that our function f is holomorphic everywhere inside of this gamma right here. And our s, so if we have some point s right here inside of our gamma, then we can express f of s as this integral. So those are the two conditions that really have to be met in order for this proof to work. So how exactly can we get started right here? To start off with this proof, let's consider some new function. I'm going to call it a g of z and we're going to define it as follows we're going to be defining it as f of z over z minus s so the exact same as this integrand in here and notice that our f is still holomorphic but we have this denominator right here z minus s and this denominator can't be zero otherwise it's going to blow up to infinity so in having this division by z minus s we're actually generating a singularity at the point s right here so that's just something to keep in mind so we want to contour integrate this at g of z a little bit somehow. So let's go back to our diagram here and let's see what we can do. We have this point S right here and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be constructing a little circle around it, a little circle around S with a radius of let's say little r like so. And what I want to show first of all is the integral along this new path right here is actually the exact same as the integral along gamma. And the way to do that is to connect these two paths a little bit. So if I make a little cut in our path in gamma right here and another cut in this um, little circle right here, and if we join them up with two new paths right here, we're going to be traversing our path like this. So we're going to be starting out gamma, we're going to be walking around, and we're going to hit this little point right here, and then we're going to traverse this path right here, which I'm going to call c1 okay and we're going to be entering this little circle path right here and since we're going in the negative direction i'm going to call this path gamma negative and then once we come out of here we're going to go back along this path right here which i'm going to call c2 and notice the path c1 and c2 are quite close to each other and later we're going to be taking the limit as those two kinds of converge onto each other so after we've left c2 we're going to be going back onto our path to gamma and then we're going to be going back to wherever we started so we can write out a couple integrals for this actually so we have this new kind of path right here which we can write as the integral along gamma plus the integral along our c1 right here plus the integral along gamma negative so this circle right here so we have plus the integral along gamma negative and then finally plus the integral along c2 and if you take a closer look at this the value of the sum of all these paths is actually going to be exactly zero if you use Cauchy's integral theorem because notice if we're integrating along this path right here of our function g of z, the region we're enclosing right here, this blue region right here, is actually completely analytic because we're kind of avoiding this singularity s like I mentioned before in our g of z. So we're avoiding this singularity and in doing so the contour integral along this new path right here will be exactly zero. So once we have this sorted out, what we can actually do is take the limit as our c1 and c2 approach each other. So if we take the limit, as our path C1 approaches C2 and vice versa, I'll just write it like that. What are we going to end up with? Well, we're gonna have two integrals that are traversed along opposite paths or opposing paths, which means they're actually going to cancel each other out because they're in opposite directions. And we're going to be left with the integral along gamma plus the integral along gamma negative being equal to zero. And from here, what we can do, let's subtract integral along gamma negative on both sides. So this is equivalent to the integral of gamma being equal to negative 
the in scroll along gamma negative and we can distribute this negative into our in scroll to kind of flip the path around or reverse the path and since now our gamma negative we're going in the opposite direction so now our little gamma is actually going in the positive direction we can change this to a plus sign to indicate that our gamma is being traversed in the anti-clockwise direction so what exactly did we just find right here we found that the in scroll along gamma our big gamma right here is the exact same thing as the integral traversed along this smaller circle right here in the positive direction. So let's clean this picture up a little bit. We pretty much just showed that the integral along big gamma is the exact same thing as the integral along little gamma. And I'm just going to call this little path in here just little gamma from now on just to make things a little bit clearer. So once we have this sorted out, notice that our R right here, our radius of the circle R, can really be anything. It actually doesn't matter what our R is because the value of the integral will actually still stay the same no matter how big or small we make our R. And later we're gonna be letting the limit as our R goes to zero and some cool things will happen when we do that. So if you look at the um, integral formula right here, we have the contour integral along our gamma right here, which was exactly what we had in the start. And we just showed that this integral right here is the exact same thing as the integral, contour integral, along little gamma of the same function g of z. So I'm just gonna write it as f of z over z minus s. And now we know the path of our gamma right here. It's just a circle of radius r centered at s. So we can do a little parameterization um, using a substitution. So our parameterization could be z being equal to s plus r e to the i theta where our theta is between 0 and 2 pi and this parameterization works because well we're dealing with a circle so we have this r e to the i theta circle of radius r and we're starting at this point s right here and we're making a little circle around our s and of course our theta is going from 0 to 2 pi because we're making one full revolution it's all we need so with this um, substitution equation right here we can differentiate both sides so we're going to have dz being equal to the derivative of s well s is just some constant for now which is going to be 0 and the derivative of this thing is going to be i r e to the i theta d theta okay and now we can substitute all of that stuff back in so now this is going to be the exact same thing as the integral and now instead of our gamma we're going from 0 to 2 pi because now we're dealing with theta so we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of and now our z is going to be s plus r e to the i theta over s plus r e to the i theta and then we have a minus s and then our dz becomes this part right here which is i r e to the i theta d theta okay notice the nice thing is this positive s and this negative s will cancel each other out and another nice thing will happen this denominator will cancel out with this part right here so r e to the i theta will cancel out and what are we left with well we're going to bring this i out to the outside because it's just a constant so we're going to have i integral from 0 to 2 pi f of s plus r e to the i theta d theta and so remember as i said before we want to take the limit as our r approaches zero so if we take the limit as r approaches the zero of this integral right here what exactly are we going to get well our r is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and ultimately this term is just going to vanish off to zero so it's just going to become zero so we're going to be left with i times the integral from zero to two pi of f of s times d theta and that's going to evaluate too well we can now bring this f of s out to the outside because it's just a constant so we're going to have i times f of s integral from zero to two pi of d theta and well integrating d theta and plugging in the bounds we're going to get two pi so we're going to have two pi i times f of s and what did we just find out right here remember we had that little integral over um, little gamma so contour integral over gamma of f of z over z minus s and we just showed that it's equal to 2 pi i times f of s so 2 pi i times f of s and we're actually really close to proving um, Cauchy's integral formula right here because remember we said that the integral along little gamma was the exact same thing as the integral along big gamma so we can do a replacement there and nothing will really change and well the final step is just to divide everything by 2 pi i so bring that over to this side we're gonna have 2 pi i 
times this contour integral being equal to f of s in the end, which was what we're expecting. So that is pretty much the proof for Cauchy's integral formula. So pretty much if you know how our function f of z behaves on the boundary or our gamma right here, where our f is um, holomorphic, using this formula right here, you can actually find out the value of the function at any single point inside of this contour integral, given that you know how to evaluate this integral to start off with. And you can kind of take it the other way as well. If you multiply both sides by a two pi i right here, and you had an integral in this form right here, where our s was inside of our gamma, you can easily find the value of the integral because it's just going to be two pi i times this f of s right here. And while we're at it, we might as well go one step further and um, take a look at the generalized Cauchy integral formula because it's actually um, not too difficult to mess around with because it's just differentiating things a couple times. Because if you have a look at this um, integral right here, notice that this denominator right here, at the point S, that's going to give us a pole of order one. And sometimes you might be taking the contour integrals with functions of poles that have higher orders. So what you can actually do is differentiate this thing with respect to X a bunch of times. We've been treating S kind of like a constant, just some kind of point inside of our contour. But now let's treat it like a variable because S can really be any complex number we want. So if we treat S as a variable, let's differentiate with respect to X and see what happens. So if we take the derivative with respect to X of F of S, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to take the derivative of this thing right here, and we're actually going to use differentiation under the integral sign in order to bring this differential operator, which would be on the outside of the integral, inside of the integral. So we're still going to have one over two pi i like so. Then I'm going to have the contour integral over gamma, and then our f of z is just a constant with respect to s, so let's leave that on the outside as well. Then I'm going to have the partial derivative with respect to s of one over z minus s dz. And let's put this in brackets just to be clear. And differentiating this thing is quite easy because, well, this is just z minus s to the negative one power. So we're going to have two pi i contour integral of f of z and the negative one power is going to turn into negative two so we're going to have one over we're going to have z minus s but squared and then using the power we're going to have a negative one on the top here and don't forget the chain rule we have to multiply by the derivative of this inside right here with respect to s which will just become negative one so that's going to cancel out right here and then we're going to have dz so that's the first iteration of the derivative let's do a second derivative so we can have d squared over the ds squared of f of s. That's going to be equal to doing the same process again. We're going to have 1 over 2 pi i contour integral. So we're going to have our f of z right here. And taking the partial derivative of this thing right here, we're going to get negative 2 over. So this negative 2 came from here using the power rule. And then we're going to have z minus s all cubed. And then using the chain rule multiplying by the derivative of the inside, that's going to get rid of this negative dz. And let's just do one more iteration right here. Let's take the third derivative, so d cubed over ds cubed of f of s. That's still going to give us 1 over 2 pi i. Then contour integral over gamma f of z. Differentiating this part right here, this 3 is going to get multiplied up here. So we're going to have negative 2 times 3, which is 6, over z minus s to the fourth power. And then chain rule multiplied by the derivative of the inside which will give us negative one and dz. So you can kind of see a nice pattern right here because every single time we go down right here, we don't really pick up a negative because the negative from using the power rule is just going to cancel out with the derivative from using the chain rule from the inside. And all of these, the more iterations we go through, we're just going to keep multiplying this power up into here. So it's basically a factorial. So we can kind of generalize this a little bit because notice if we take the nth derivative with respect to s of our function f of s, that's going to give us one over two pi i times the contour integral over gamma of f of z. And this numerator right here, each time we go down, it's going to be multiplied in by a new power. So it's going to be and a factorial. And now here, if you look here, we had a second derivative, which corresponded to two factorial right here. And we had three, which was nothing but two plus one. And here we had the third derivative, which corresponds to three factorial. And here we had three plus one, which is exactly four. So this is n factorial, 
over z minus s and then instead of n we're going to have n plus one dc and we can kind of clean things up a little bit here if you want so let's write the derivative this way we're going to have the nth derivative of our function f of s being equal to now we're going to bring this n factorial to the outside so we're going to have n factorial over 2 pi i then the contour integral over gamma of f of z over z minus s to the n minus 1 dz and this result right here this is what we call the generalized Cauchy integral formula so we have the original Cauchy integral formula and we have the generalized version and this formula right here is really nice to use to calculate contour integrals because you can actually rearrange this a little bit and if we have contour integral over gamma of that's the exact same thing as 2 pi i times the nth derivative evaluated at s over n factorial. So this is a nice little formula in order to evaluate contour integrals of this type right here. And just to reiterate a couple things, our f is holomorphic in our gamma right here, as well as s being inside gamma. So those are pretty much the two conditions that need to be met in order to use all of these um, Cauchy integral formulas right here. And I might do a video in the future where I go through a couple of examples of evaluating these integrals using the um, Cauchy integral formula. So yep, that is pretty much it for this video. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, until next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.